Greetings from Goblin Valley, Nisedal, Norway. I'm here, so you don't have to be. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Pulse 24 from Vandy Wape, a Tony B project. This is a uh, 24 mm uh, dual coil or single coil squonk ready postless RDA. Now, all reviewers have already done this, so this will not be a technical review with uh, close ups of the deck and stuff like that. This will be an airflow review and a uh, coil placement tutorial. First we will uh, look at schematics, then we will look at uh, airflow footage and uh, some stills and try to draw a conclusion on uh, coil sizes, coil placement and uh, wrap it all up and see if we can reach a sort of conclusion of it all. Let's head inside. Let's just familiarize ourselves with this uh, build deck again. Now the air comes in to the RDA from four different tubes coming in like this from the sides. and uh, supposedly hitting the coils and uh, on each side of the coils you have um, uh, wells to have your juice and on the uh, center block you have tiny holes that spill the juice into the wells and the cotton screens off everything like so. So the red areas I have marked are the areas where the air can uh, be turbulent or flow or go under and up in between the coils. This is of the most uh, uttermost importance for us. Directly under the coils are the four screws that come in from uh, the sides uh, so, and uh, that means this deck is uh, yeah postless. This uh, drawing is to scale 10 to 1. One centimeter here is one millimeter in real life. Uh, let's orient ourselves again. Uh, this is uh, the well. It's, um, it's situated here. Here you see the screws come in from each side. And this is where you lock the legs of your coils. This is where the air comes in through four uh, air tubes and this is the drip tip where vapor leaves the uh, chamber. There are only two uh, numbers that are of interest uh, for us. That is that uh, the combined area of air intake is 44 mm squared divided on the four tubes. So about 11 uh, square millimeters uh, on each tube. And the other number that is of interest and um, very much so, that is the uh, angle of attack. I was really surprised when I got this uh, RDA because uh, I was expecting a much steeper angle of attack. I was expecting like the, the Pulse uh, 22, but they have placed them uh, like this, maybe to shorten the, um, the height of the RDA. And uh, well, uh, that is something we have to take into consideration. Now, uh, when we, uh, we are going to watch some footage and stills, and um, the, the chamber is also to scale, uh, uh, or <laughs> uh, the the tubes are four centimeters in diameter and each square behind the footage is um, one uh, by one centimeter 
and the angle is well the best I could uh, do to simulate this RDA. So let's grab our favorite snacks and uh, a cup of herbal tea and then we will watch some footage and stills together. The vacuum cleaner is on the top, smack between the two coils. A vapor is coming in from the right and uh, the left uh, tube is closed shut. And as you see, you have flow both over and under the right coil. And you even have flow over the coil on the left. There is a bit light difference, so uh, there is no uh, stream of air going to the top, only turbulence because of the blowback when it hits the right coil. And here you have a still shot uh, at 1 30th of a second. This gives a much better impression of the flow rather than have a totally freeze frame at 1 1,000th of a second as I have used to do uh, earlier. Now the most interesting stuff for me is uh, the flow underneath and on the left coil. On the left coil you see at 10 o'clock and uh, 8 o'clock you actually have separation points because the flow is going around the right coil gathering right in between the two coils and then spread out again over the left coil but then the speed of the air has slowed so much that even the Koanda effect is starting to give up. And this image I find truly amazing. And uh, also uh, notice the um, turbulence below the left coil. This is very cool footage. There is vapor coming in from the right and clear air in from the left. And here you can clearly see that there is a uh, bra uh, high contrast area around the left coil because the air from the left is blowing the vapor from the right clear off. And right in between the two coils you have a very very clear uh, spot where a vapor is pushed off and you have also a peel off spot on the right uh, coil. We'll look at the still then you'll understand much better. Yes, sometimes a picture speaks more than a thousand uh, words or even more than a video clip. Here you can clearly see, see what I'm talking about. If you just look now at the right side coil. At 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock approximately, there are what you call separation points. Separation points occur when the flow leaves a curved uh, surface, like a ball or a cylinder. It's of very high interest to notice where this happens. On the left coil, you have a very clear area around it. And that means that the air flow is keeping the vapor flow away from it. So we have nice flow around both objects but between the objects there has to be a certain amount of uh, turbulence um, uh, when the two flows meet there. Uh, the most vapor however is under uh, the two uh, coils. So um, from this image alone, one can tell that having space between the two coils and having space below the two coils. Uh, not as much as you can see here, but the space below the two coils uh, has to be enough to allow the collision of the two flows and an ability to escape from the stalemate that is created between the coils 
and below the coils. Here we have uh, a steeper angle and uh, uh, watch uh, the flow pattern uh, below the blowing tubes. You will see there are vortices up and to the sides from the center. So uh, with a higher angle or steeper angle of attack you will see that space in your RDA isn't always your enemy. If you watch this a couple of ti times, you will see the vortices very clearly. Let's go back to the drawing board. As you saw in the last uh, footage, when we had steeper angle of attack and a lot more space below the coils, you saw this backlash on the right side. And that turbulence going down, they hit each other, but there is space to escape and they escape to the side and escape up. That makes for very good flavor. On the dead rabbit RDA, I placed the coils way to the sides because the angle of attack was 60 degrees or something like that. That results in they being so far apart that the turbulence hits down and goes straight up with velocity. And that may explain why the dead rabbit, when you put your coil in the airstream as far to the sides as you can, then you get an absolutely fantastic flavor on your way. But now let's talk about the um, a Pulse 24. These uh, two uh, uh, items are um, uh, 52 uh, millimeters. So this is like having two coils that are 5 millimeter in outer diameters. If these two should be pla should, uh, are placed in the RDA to be hit where they should be hit, that is perpendicular to the flow in order to have an even flow around them. You will see that you end up with the coils almost touching the tubes and between them maybe you have a half a millimeter and a half a millimeter uh, and yes, less than that on each side and approximately half a millimeter below the coils. This is a recipe for disaster and not good flavor. But by any means, if you like your vapor very hot and very dense, then uh, do this. I, I won't. If you step down uh, uh, in outer diameter, say to a 4 millimeter outer diameter, the picture is dramatically changed. You will end up with 1 millimeter here and 2 millimeters between the coils. Like in the video footage you saw, the uh, coil mock-ups were 4 centimeter. So this is to scale. Uh, and also you get uh, uh, space between your coil, uh, below your coil, sorry. So you will have, when this collision occurs, I, I don't have two, uh, four centimeters, but let's use this one. So when the collision uh, happens here, as you saw in the video, you saw flicks of vapor struggling for power in this center. That's not good. So you need to resolve this. I propose to move your coil as close to the tube as you possibly can. Give as much space as you can for the collision of the flows so you get the separation points uh, as uh, close together as possible. 
then the stuff that will happen is that because of the space between the pipes and on the side of the pipes you actually have a two millimeter space here to play with so you can move this very close to the to the air pipes and leave as much space as possible here and you even end up with two millimeters of space below if you keep yourself under four millimeters in outer diameter there is of course uh, someone who will try to put a really big coil in the center or a smaller coil in the center but because of the airstream you will see that you have no space left below it if you put a bigger coil the picture gets even worse this area will have no cooling flow whatsoever and there will also be a zero point below it so don't ever do that on this RDA so before we uh, uh, build coils and, and see what it looks like on the actual deck um, if you use uh, flat wire or a single wire or a single plane wire in parallel which I also recommend then you should have an inner diameter a drill bit of three millimeters if you use claptons of any kind use claptons with an outer wrap wire of 40 gauge 38 40 46 but very very thin and 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 keep yourself at about the two millimeter inner diameter on the drill bit Maybe you, if you use a 46 gauge uh, wrapping wire, you can you can uh, climb up to two and a half millimeter of inner diameter. But let's build and, and see what it looks like on the deck. And here they are on the build uh, deck. As you can see, they are flush. Well, actually, a third of a millimeter below and um, uh, this is how they look from uh, the top let me find a better angle for you these are a 24 gauge uh, cancel hammered uh, flat so the outer diameter of these coils is uh, 3.7 millimeters and um, they have a lot of space uh, below them one and a half millimeter at least but the main thing to avoid the terrible turbulence and conflict between the coils this is the space you should strive for and actually even more if you can achieve it i i have saved out a millimeter uh, of, uh, for the tubes let me put the cap on so as you can see uh, there are still more room uh, I can push my coils uh, further to the side and um, but I, I will not risk uh, losing cooling uh, in the dead center of the coil so I'm, I'm happy where these are now because these are going to run extremely hot but uh, now that I feel confident that I, I, I'm, I understand these things I will risk um, uh, that low ohm with a uh, flat wire coil and let's see if I blow up or if it's nice. Let's wick and wait. Well, it's half past three o'clock and the sun has set. I really hope you learned something from what we did and uh, what I showed you. Try to think and try to analyze these images for yourself. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm not totally right all the time. I'm, I'm just as often wrong. 
But now we have the proof of the flow and we see how it moves and how it hit the coils. There are still some mystery RDAs out there and I will deal with them one after another when I get a hold of them. But in this case, on the Pulse 24, remember to have space below your coils. I found it very helpful just to put my... Um, my uh, uh, drill bit uh, on top of the ledge and uh, at, at uh, uh, three three and a half millimeter inner diameter three and a half three and a half with a flat wire they just uh, the height was just perfect i did however push my coils even further to the sides than what i showed you in the close-up uh, because i had a tiny bit of spatter and just moving each coil half a millimeter to the side and the spatter was gone. And I have that experience with a couple of other RDAs too. Like uh, the flavor. I, I took the butt end of a pencil and pushed the coil half a millimeter down from what I had, uh, from what I thought was correct. And, uh, and the flavor changed dramatically. I mean, from, the one, from one second to the after. And the flavor now from the Pulse24 is, um, is absolutely fantastic. And the clouds are... Okay, I'll show you. The clouds are not dark grey and dense and hot, but there is so much flavor. It's, it's like the proverbial uh, lead feather pillow. And, uh, and uh, the amount of flavor is, is absolutely fantastic. Of course you can regulate uh, the air, but uh, try just to, to, to do a calmer draw instead of adjusting the airflow. And compared to the dead rabbit, the dead rabbit has uh, more bottom in the flavor and, and uh, more heft to it. But then again, uh, as I briefly told you, the dead rabbit has this turbulence shooting up through the drip tip, as you saw in the last uh, footage example that I had when, when the vapor given room shot out on the sides. And, and uh, this could be better constructed, uh, but, uh, but I, I don't see how they could make uh, more, more space and allowed this. Maybe if we had the steeper angle, on, on the, uh, maybe an angle of attack of say 30 degrees or 40 degrees, then the space between the coils could be used for an updraft instead of just slightly eliminating the struggle and the zero points uh, between the coils as i have done now but for what it is it's uh, right up there with with the death trap and the dead rabbits and uh, other dead stuff <laughs> so uh, well that's my take on it and um, see you soon Oh my god. Mm. Oh yes. Mm.